Okay, in this video we're going to, to um, look at some real-life examples of adding and subtracting mixed numbers. <coughs> so the first one is uh, Jim runs this many miles and a couple of questions on it. Okay, example two is um, uh, you know stock price and a couple of questions on that. And then example three is the uh, a field and find the perimeter and area of the field. Okay, so we'll start with example one. And um, if Jim runs two and three fifths miles on Monday and three and one quarter miles on Tuesday, we'll start with how far did he run altogether? Okay. So by all means, press pause and go ahead and do this yourself. See if you can get it. <coughs> or you can, you know, race me and and uh, see if you can get the answer before me. So how far did he run altogether? I mean, like you know, if you combine the two days together, how many miles is that together, right? So what have we got to do with these numbers then? Add them or subtract them? We add them, right? So two and three fifths, and we've got to add that to three and one quarter. <coughs> okay. Um, let's see. Well, how did we like to add? Um, yeah, we'll just. I guess we can we do it this way three and one quarter okay so if we're adding these first of all okay two and three is five that's fine but we don't have a common denominator so if we're going to add fractions we have to have a, low, uh, a common denominator so um, find the lowest common denominator between fifths and quarters right So if you think about multiples of 5, you got 5, 10, 15, 20, right? 4 goes into 20. It doesn't go into 5, 10, or 50. Okay. So what do I do to 4 to turn it into a 20? I need 20ths, right? And what do I do to 5? What do I multiply 5 by to turn that into 20, right? So multiply 4 times 5 to get 20. So multiply this guy by 5 over 5. So 1 quarter becomes 5 twentieths. Uh, multiply this guy by 4. four 5 times 4 is 20. And multiply top by 4 as well. Right. So 3 times 4 is 12. So I've got 12 twentieths. And I'm adding 5 twentieths. And that gives me 19 twentieths. Now, does that simplify? Can I put anything lowest terms or anything like that? Oh, 19, for goodness sakes, look at that. Made a mistake. 17 twentieths. So, 5 and 17 twentieths. Can we simplify that? Nope, so that's the answer, right? Okay, and let's have a look at this. How much farther did he run on Tuesday than Monday? By all means, press pause and see if you can figure it out yourself. Okay, we've got to either add or subtract these numbers. So what should we do? So he ran farther on Tuesday for sure, three and a uh, quarter miles. And that's farther than two and three fifths. So let's uh, try that then. We'll take the three and one quarter and we will subtract, won't we? Two and three fifths, right? Okay, so our first problem is, um, hold on a second, we don't have a lowest common denominator. Then I would also suspect that uh, we might need to, to uh, borrow because look at this. Um, the, uh, the one quarter is less than three fifths. So anyway, no matter what happens, we have to get a uh, lowest common denominator, right? Which uh, we know how to do. It's got to be 20, it's the same as the last problem, right? So times this guy by four, times this guy by five, so five over five, and this guy by four over four, right? So this fellow becomes, um, he, so we've got, uh, well I guess I'll just write it out again, uh, 3 and 5 twentieths minus 2 and uh, 12 twentieths. But the problem is I'm going 5 twentieths minus 12 twentieths, so I've got to carry, I've got to um, borrow, don't I? And I guess, um, I guess I used to. I'll just, I'll just uh, kind of set it up like that. And when I was borrowing, I guess I was doing this. Turn this 
work on this three now. Okay, so this three is two and how many twentieths? Two and twenty twentieths, right? I've also got five twentieths. So twenty twentieths and five twentieths, that's twenty-five twentieths. So this guy becomes the three and five twentieths becomes two and twenty-five twentieths. And of course I need to subtract two and um, twelve twentieths, right? So go ahead and do that and see what you get. So 2 minus 2 is 0. We'll write 0 down for fun. 25 minus 12 is 13 twentieths. So 0 plus 13 twentieths. In other words, 13 twentieths. Can we put that in lowest terms? Or is that is that it? 13 twentieths. That's the answer, isn't it? Yep. Okay, so we should give our answers in miles, of course. This this one is uh, 5 and 17 twentieths of a mile, or 5 and 17 twentieth miles. And this is uh, 3 twentieths of a mile, or 3 twentieth uh, mile. Or, th or sorry, 13, <coughs> 13 twentieths of a mile, right? <coughs> okay, let's have a look at um, example 2. We've got a company, we've got stock prices, and if you, if you read this, it says, you know, March the 4th, 2012, this is the stock price. March uh, 24th, 2012, this is the stock price. Okay, So we'll have two questions. We'll start with this one. Find the difference in price between March 24th and March 4th. This is March 24th, this is March 4th. So what's the difference in price? Can you figure that out for yourself? By all means, press pause and do it yourself. And then check, or you can you know, try and do it faster than me if you like to. Okay, difference indicates we should add, subtract, multiply, or divide. What does that indicate? Which operation should be used? Add them, subtract, multiply, divide. Subtract maybe, right? Difference always implies you've got to subtract, okay? So I've got to, the difference price between this and this, I've got to take the bigger one obviously and subtract the smaller one. So take the 24th, subtract this. So 41 and 1 half subtract um, 38 and 7 eighths. Okay. Now my first problem is I'm subtracting but I don't have a common denominator. So what's a common multiple of 2 and 8? What's a number, the smallest number you can think of that both 2 and 8 went to? You can think about multiples of 2. 2, 4, 6, 8. 8 goes into 8, 2 goes into 8, right? So that's going to work for us, right? So 2 times what gives 8? 2 times 4, right? Uh, you must multiply top by 4 as well, right? So this guy becomes 4 eighths. So I've got 41 and 4 eighths minus 38 and 7 eighths, right? Now, um, hold on a second, 4 eighths here, 7 eighths here looks like I need to borrow again, right? Because um, this, you know, this, this is bigger. So um, I've got to get some change or borrow from the 41. So I'm going to take a unit from 41 and that, that number is going to be 40 now. 40 and how many eighths is the same thing as 41? Sorry. 40 and how many eighths? 40 and 8 eighths, right? So it's that, and then plus the 4 eighths, which is 40, okay? 8 eighths and 4 eighths is 12 eighths, okay? So I have 40 and 12 eighths. So 41 and 4 eighths becomes 40 and 12 eighths, right? Of course, I still need to subtract the 38 and 7 eighths, so I guess I'll put that underneath it, because I can do that now, right? So, um, 12 take away 7 is 5, so that leaves me with 5 eighths, that worked, and 40 minus 38 is 2. Can I put the answer to lowest terms, or is that already simplified? Okay, it's already simplified. Now, what is the unit here? How many, is that miles or yards or what? Let's see. Stock price, dollars. So this is dollars, this is dollars, right? 
And so if I take the difference, of course, I'll end up with dollars. So the difference in price between this day, this day, this day is is two dollars and five eighths uh, cents, or, or five, uh, two two and five eighths uh, of a dollar, and um, it went up, of course, right? The, the stock price went up. So the next question is: If you own a thousand shares of stock, how much more has their value increased altogether, right? So the point is: If you own a thousand of these. You know, if one stock is worth that amount, um, and then a thousand of them would be this times a thousand, okay? And then you would now have a thousand of the same stock, and they're now this price. So this times a thousand would be your new money. But we just figured out that it increased in price by two and five eighths of a dollar, right? So um, your increase, of course, would be uh, by a thousand fold, wouldn't it? Be a thousand times the increase because uh, you have a thousand stocks, right? So, how would you figure out this problem? Press pause and try and get it, and then I'll do it, okay? So, press pause and see if you can figure it out for yourself. Okay, you have a thousand shares of stock. They have all increased by two dollars and five eighths, two and five eighths of a dollar, right? So, don't we say, okay, um, a thousand of them uh, times two and five eighths of a dollar. Wouldn't that do it? Yep. And um, we can. There's two ways to multiply this. I guess the way we're kind of used to at the moment is um, put just turning both of them into uh, fraction into uh, fractions and multiplying the tops and the bottoms. So I guess we could just do that that way for now. So um, we got to turn the number of thousand into a fraction. A thousand can be written a thousand over one, right? And now turn this mixed number into an improper fraction. Eight times two, sixteen. Sixteen plus five, twenty-one. Eights, right? Now, can we cross cancel anything? Last time I checked, uh, four goes into you know a hundred and, and definitely a thousand. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, I'm going to go four into that goes twice. What's four into ten? Twice. Remainder what? Remainder two. Okay. What's four into twenty? Five times. And four into zero. Zero times. Okay. Oh, I think I can. Can I cross cancel again? Because look, 250 is an even number, right? Okay, so it's 2 times 250. So, so 2 into 2 goes once, and 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 5 goes twice, remainder 1, and 2 into this 10 here goes 5 times. So what I have is, um, I'll just write it out just for fun, 125 times 21 over 1 times 1, okay? Um, so I'll just uh, calculate that by law multiplication, 125 by 21, 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1, put down a 0, for because I'm multiplying by tens now, two times five is ten, but then zero carry the one. Two times two is four, and one is um, five, and two times one is two. Right? Did I do that right? Yep. Yeah. And then add them: five, two, six, two. Right? So what I get is um. 2, 6, 2, 5 over 1 times 1 is 1. So that, of course, is what? 2, 6, 2, 5. Now, what's the units on this? Yards, feet, uh, meters, camels? So I owned a thousand um, shares of stock, and each stock increased by two dollars and uh, five eight, two and five eighths of a dollar. So I multiplied it by a thousand, and I get that that's dollars, isn't it? Yep. 
So I have increased my wealth by uh, almost over two and a half thousand dollars, right? Example three. Here is a field. Let's call it a soccer field or a football field or whatever, right? It's a rectangular shape. Um, and we've got to find the perimeter and then we have to find the area, okay? So let's just remind ourselves um, if I had just a little field and it was three yards and then four yards and then uh, three yards and four yards, what would the perimeter be? The perimeter would be um, the distance all the way around the outside of the field, okay? So the perimeter would be <coughs> three yards, okay, plus four yards, plus three yards, plus four yards, okay? If I add them all up, seven, ten, fourteen, fourteen yards, I've added them, okay? And it's distance, it's just a distance around. It's not area, so it's measured in yards. It's just a distance around the outside, okay? So the perimeter of this guy would be this distance, added to this distance, added to this distance, and then added to this distance, okay? So the perimeter would be, I'll just write it out slowly so I make it easy, it'll be 26 and 2 thirds, this distance, plus 70. Now I don't stop there. A lot of people just like to stop there and, and that's a mistake. You can't do that because you see it's, it's a 26 and 2 thirds, then it's 70, then it's another 26 and 2 thirds here, you see. You've got to add another uh, 26 and 2 thirds. And then you've got to add, don't forget, this distance up here, that's another 70, right? All right, so that's what we have. Now, let's be smart about adding this. First of all, 70 and 70, what does that give us? 140, right? Cool. Um, then we have the uh, 26 and 2 thirds and the 26 and 2 thirds. I guess we could uh, work that out. 26 and 2 thirds plus 26 and 2 thirds. Do we have the same denominator, or do we need to find the lowest common denominator? Same denominator, right? Just thirds. So, two-thirds and two-thirds is four-thirds. Twenty-six and twenty-six is... Six and six is twelve. Carry the one. Five, fifty-two. But hold on a second. Four and a th four-thirds, that's an improper fraction. Let's turn that into a mixed number. Turn four-thirds into a mixed number. 3 into 4 goes one time, remainder 1, 1 and 1 third, right? So this guy is 52 and 1 and 1 third, right? Which of course is 53 and 1 third, isn't it? So I have to add him on up here because, see, when I added the 70 into 70, that gave me 140. When I add 26 and 2 thirds to 26 and 2 thirds, that gives me 53 and 1 third. When I add these guys together, I can just add the whole numbers, right? So I've got to put the, the this is a 10, that's a 10, so 4 and 5 is 9, so it's 100, 9 tens, 0 and 3 is 3, and of course the 1 third, and that's the answer. All right? Oh, by the way, what's the units? Dollars? Inches? Forgot the units, didn't we? Perimeter is the distance all the way around the outside. If you just add up, if you just walk around the outside of a field, you're going to be measuring in yards. Okay, so that's yards. 193 and a third yards. Okay, let's find the area of the field. And I'll remind ourselves what area is. Um, if you had a, a field that was three yards by four yards. by, which of course is 3 by 4, right? So 1, 2, 3 in this direction. You can just draw this really quickly so you remind yourself that this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. The, the area, you see, the area is counting up how many uh, yards squared we have. Each square here is one square yard. Yd squared. One square yard. Remember that? 
one square yard. So um, area is measured in you know surface, like like what's the amount of surface uh, we have there, you know. So we count up the yards squared. Count them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. What's an easier way to come up with the number twelve? And just go three times four. Yep. And if I did that, three yards times four yards. Three times four is twelve. Okay. But yard times yard is yards squared or squared yards. Okay. Just to remind yourself. So anyway, are we have the same type of problem, just different numbers. The length, so area is length times width basically. The length is 70, the width is you know 26 two thirds. So to get the area, we need to do this: 70 yards uh, multiplied by 26 and two thirds yards. Okay. And of course, you know, we can just leave the yards out of there because it's kind of confusing. But but yard times yard in the end will give us yards squared. We'll see that in, see that at the end. Now multiplying um, fractions. Uh, mixed numbers and fractions and stuff. So mixed numbers. So I need to turn them both in both into fractions. How would you write seventy as a fraction? Seventy over one, isn't it? Now turn this guy into an improper fraction. <coughs> What's three times twenty six? Well let's do that. Uh, twenty six times three. Three times six is eighteen. Carry the one. Three times two is six and one is seven. Okay, then I've got to add two, don't I? So um, seventy-eight and two is eighty, right? So because I'm adding this two thirds here, so that is I have eighty thirds. And does anything cross cancel? I don't think so. Three won't go into either of these, right? No, no, three isn't going to go in. So um, we are just going to have to multiply across. 7 times 8 is 56, and 10, 10 times 10 is 100, so in any case you'll have two zeros there, right? And it's divided by 1 times 3 is 3. So my answer is whatever this turns out to be. So I guess we got to do a little, be a little bit of division here. 3 into 5, 6, 0, oh, oh. Now, 3 into 5 goes one time. Remainder 2. What's 3 into 26? Well, 9 threes is 27, 8 threes is 24, so that's 8 times remainder 2, isn't it? 3 into 20, 7 threes is 21, but 6 threes is 18, so 3 into 20 is 6 times remainder 2. Uh, 3 into 20 again is 6 times, and put a decimal point here on this guy because, oh, you know what? We'll just do uh, remainder. Uh, 6 times remainder 2, right? Which means the answer is 1866 remainder 2. I'm dividing 3 in there, so it's 1866 and 2 thirds. Okay? <clears throat> so that's the answer. Now, what is that? Um, what are the units on that? Uh, feet, meters, dollars? What are we talking about? Well, we're finding the area. And we're talking about yards, so it must be square yards. And also, just for fun, I've thrown the yards in at the beginning of the problem here, just to show you that, you know, these are going to be multiplied to give yards squared, yd squared, or square yards. So the answer is a hundred, or one thousand eight hundred sixty-six and two thirds square yards. Right.